Hello everybody, I'm Pranjal Sharma. I'm at the Siemens Innovation Day in Mumbai and I'm going to be having a conversation with Peter Kurte, the Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Technology Officer on the importance of industrial metaverse and its many implications for industrial growth, not just in India, but across the world. Peter, it's wonderful to see you again at Siemens Innovation Day in Mumbai. Uh, it's been a year since we last spoke, but what is fascinating is how the tech landscape is suddenly looking so different. <laughs> and I, I like the fact that you've been talking about industrial metaverse, hope and hype. And that itself is a very fascinating cycle. Can you, I mean, and I see this display over here of industrial metaverse and there's very fascinating changes that uh, Siemens has brought from the accelerator concept. But what is the hope and what is the hype about industrial metaverse? So the hype certainly was associated with everything that we thought is possible, in particular in the consumer space, right? That's where it really is coming from, from the gaming industry, this whole idea about uh, being in real time, collaborating in an immersive world that really captured our mind, right? We really took that concept, but then we said, wait a minute, can we use this also in the industrial world? And it turns out, yes, we can. It, we can develop such a, very complex thing as a battery manufacturing plant, which costs billions uh, and which is really complicated to operate, but we can simulate it and can build a digital twin of the entire factory. We can connect it to actually the real-time operations and therefrom then really see how we can improve OEE, how we can improve energy efficiency, flexibility and sustainability around it. So it works beautifully. Except that, of course, it is emerging over time. So this is innovative. And I really wanted to show the realm of the possible. And I wanted to show the technologies that are coming in the next three to five years mainstream. And what's fascinating is that from beverages to buildings, you're covering an entire spectrum of industries. So it's not that it's only for a certain sector. It, it has application everywhere. Yes. So for sure, many elements such, for example, edge computing, right, or machine vision that is based on AI, these have almost universal applications across different industries and end markets. Now, of course, there's industries that are quite specific, take beverage, uh, food and beverage, as you said. So this, this is more of a process industry. So therefore, or there's a process industry step in it. There you need different tool sets, but by and large, the concept can be translated. When we talk about, uh, let's, let's take a walk around and, and see the industrial operations as well that you're, uh, you're referring to. But as you talk of industrial operations, Peter, I think one of the main points is the various elements that go into industrial metaverse. You talked about from IoT to blockchain yeah. uh, to digital twins. Yes. And that's again a fascinating uh, configuration, isn't it? It is. And it just shows you that it, the industrial metaverse, you will not switch it on overnight, right? So, so this technology will evolve. It always starts with connectivity, 5G, the very shop floor, connecting your machines. This is the number one thing our customers are struggling, help us to connect our machine. The minute you have that, you start then thinking about, okay, where do I process the data? Do I go to the cloud, to put it in the edge? Then you go one level higher and you think about, okay, now how can I build my AI ML systems on it? And then how do I actually take it in as a, as a, as a user, am I using VR glasses or not? I can do it still on the 2D screen. So all of these technologies is important. And then you think about, okay, now how do I exchange that information with my customers and suppliers, which gets you to blockchain. So different pieces along the way, but they all come together eventually in that industrial metaverse. And when you say blockchain, it's also about data security and protecting all the information which is being created, which becomes a very important element. Yes. So it is a low energy blockchain, so that's right. important because that's of another course. question we always have. Sure. Which is true. I mean, if you have a ledger which really builds and you have a huge amount of transactions and every, every time you have to recompute, then that's, that's, a, that's a huge energy uh, consumer, right? So this, in this case, what we're using is a low energy uh, blockchain that really helps to build trust between different parties. They don't know each other. So that's exactly what we do. And here, as we see Industrial Operations X, from automated to adaptive manufacturing. But when we say adaptive, it's, it's a reflection of the fact that every company has to be very agile in its product mix. Is that something that you are serving? Yes, we do. And the, the, the notion about adaptiveness is that you can respond to the real-time condition what is happening. In other words, you have these feedback loops, the closed loop concept, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there's an action, for example, the machine is milling, 
but then you, you realize it's starting, it, it's, it's milling too fast. And then you get that signal back to the machine. It's adapting its speed and then it, it slows down yet again. So it is that, that closed loop processes that we try to build everywhere we go. It is also the concept that when production is happening today, companies want to be able to make multiple products on the same line. Yes. And that is also the adaptability that you can offer, I assume. That is the flexibility uh, in particular, so, so that you can very have a very fast change over time. The adaptability is really usually around quality. Okay. So that you ensure highest level of quality and consistency in your manufacturing processes. One of the questions always is about SMEs, uh, yes. Peter, because the effort required to set up a digital twin for an industrial metaverse is very high. Um, it's not just about money, it's about time, resources, and even skilling the people who are going to be running it. Uh, how do you see the evolution where SMEs would also be able to embrace it and find that there is value for them? So what we find is that the piece, we, we spoke about the industrial metaverse having many different pieces, right? It's not that hard if you have it as a service, because software as a service means no capex. True. It means you don't need to have a data center. It means you don't have to have an IT administrator and so on and so on. So if you provide it as a service, those tools, actually it's quite simple. We have, we have startups today that are five people that build essentially their own small industrial metaverse. So it can be done. Five people do the whole thing. The, the biggest struggle we find is actually brownfield. Because once you've built something uh, and you don't have already taken the first steps in terms of digitalizing it, it's much, much harder to then do the 3D point cloud and then try to retroactively build the digital model to connect all the devices that are around. So it's much, much harder, which is the reason why India has such a huge potential. Because if you think about it, you have 60 million SMEs. You want to go from 15 to 25 percent GDP of manufacturing in the next few years and, and the GDP, while well, the GDP is growing. So there's a massive amount that goes into new factories. And this, I hope, for India and for the people of India and for those companies that are operating it, that they think digital first already and they, they develop these in the digital world before they even build it. And therefore, India's role uh, as a market, but India's role also as a contributor of, of some innovations becomes very critical because the, I, I would like to think that the emerging markets like India or growth markets like India have a very unique set of needs which you are also catering to with your long presence here. Yes, we do. We are in, in India since 1867, so <laughs> we have been really here since a long time. And we have, what's great about it is we have such a good strong base, in particular the software component and in particular the ability to speak in an English language where you can very easily code and build that. That's such a gift. It's so hard to take that into an economy. But in India, you already have it, right? We alone at Siemens, we have 12,000 software engineers in India alone. And so we can build on that base for our own digitalization, but we also can help then everybody else in India to do their, their own part. So Peter, finally, I, I want to ask you, what are some of the most exciting innovations around uh, the accelerator that we can expect from Siemens uh, for India and for the world? Yeah, so um, for sure, the most exciting ones are um, something around user experience. Mm -hmm. So things are becoming insanely intuitive and easy. Uh, so it feels more consumerish than, than actually the old enterprise, you know, the old tree structure that you had in, you know, Explorer and so on. So really things become feeling very, very natural. That's one exciting thing, I think. The second one is actually the cause. We, we're talking about decarbonization quite right. a bit. And uh, there's a lot of tools coming, such as Seagreen, that really helps us to better have an understanding of your baseline and then also make the right trade-offs and choices to make that work. So we tend to think of very comprehensive digital twins where you can not only optimize for cost and time, but also for sustainability. So in other words, creating green digital twins. And so these are great innovations. And, and the fun foundation of that is energy management. It usually Both is. for creation, generation, and use. So through right. your digital twins, you can manage that far with far greater efficiency. They are the basis for pretty much everything, as the human body is pretty much everything for metabolism or for your cognitive thinking. 
This is what the digital twin is pretty much in the digital world. But you are very optimistic about the industrial metaverse, and I'm going to end on the point that we started, uh, which is that it's a great hope for global industry, for manufacturing, and would you say it's going to be a very important boost for economic growth uh, across the world and for industrial growth? So, I would then end with a lot of market studies that were published at the time, and they would suggest that um, it's between 4 to 13 trillion of additional potential can be generated through the metaverse. Now, that was all the metaverses, including the consumer and the enterprise part. But in the industrial, we are absolutely convinced that this is the next S-curve, um, and that will happen multiple steps, as we said, not all at once, not all in one industry, but it will happen. Thank you, Peter. Thanks. That we'll end on that positive note because industrial metaverse, which a lot of people felt is dead, is actually going to be the new hope for industrial operations across the world. Thank you for joining us today.